everybody. Welcome back. I'm about to burn my tongue on this TikTok tea, and so are you. Hey, guys. This is a story of my business getting broken into last night at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, this guy showed up around 3 o'clock and decided to just hang out for a while. He sat outside for about 15 to 20 minutes, honestly knocked on the door, just sat there, hung out, chilled, and vibed. And then I guess he got bored sitting there and decided to kick the door in. <laughs> Um, so that was really great. Um, he really carefully gets into the door, so shout out my guy on the glass safety. Uh, walks himself right into my bakery at 3, probably 3.30 in the morning. What is he doing? Point. And he walks around for a while, then he decides to take a rest. He must be really <laughs> tired from breaking into my business. So he sits down for, I don't know, a solid 10, 15 minutes, uh, goes to the bathroom, and then I guess he realizes that he's made a huge mess with all of the broken glass. So he finds the mop and mop bucket and starts cleaning up his glass mess. Um, honestly, got a little what? criminal who is at least respectful. Um, you know, a respectful king. We love to see it. He didn't do a very good job, though. Uh, he left us these selfies, like some nice gifts <laughs> on the store phone. Stop! Um, and after all that, he was in the business for about an hour and ten minutes. And the only thing he walked out with was six chocolate champagne cupcakes. No! So I hope they're good, bro. Next time, just ask. We'll be happy to give you the six cupcakes. <laughs> Have a good one. Stop! Are you kidding me right now? Like, what? But he was just hungry. I love that he felt like a little bit of remorse and he like cleaned up the, <laughs> the glass. Uh, you know, I've never been so drunk that I felt the need to break into a bakery shop and steal some cupcakes, but you know, there's time. Hey, TikTok, ask and you shall receive. Let's do some updates while my door gets fixed and I work on an order for tomorrow. So the big news is that our burglar gave us a call to the bakery. He spoke to my staff and we were able to arrange a time for him and I to have a conversation. What? He profusely apologized. Um, you know, you could tell it was really sincere and he has offered to pay for the door and for the cupcakes. Um, we've asked the police not to press charges, so we really hope that that's what happens. Um, but, you know, him and I had a good laugh together. You know, I told him I'm not mad or upset. He told me that maybe one day we could uh, sit down together and have a cupcake <laughs> and just talk about the situation. And he also told me that he would give me his orange sunglasses, which I am dying for. I feel like I would wear them all the time, just to, <laughs> you know, make light of the situation. But that's the big update. Um, we'll obviously keep you posted if there's anything else that goes down. But our door is finally fixed and we're ready to go forward and drive on. Oh, this is so unexpectedly wholesome. I'm here for this. How cute! Buddy redeemed himself, especially with the orange sunglasses. Also, that cake was like top notch beautiful. The fact that you got served a cease and desist for slander and don't care, now who's about to get sued? All right, let's play this game. At around 12.06 a.m. Sunday morning, I received an email from one Dana Ramirez asking me to urgently sign this document. This document was a cease and desist from Dana Ramirez asking that I stop stalking and harassing their client, take down all content of that client, or actions will be taken. Now, me being as stubborn as I am, I let this lawyer know that I thought this whole situation was pretty funny based on the fact that her client had multiple comments up and down my comment section, had multiple response videos to my oh! videos, she DM'd me multiple times, followed me, and even found my Instagram just to comment about how short I was. And right after I notified the lawyer about those, the comments and videos started to disappear. And that right there is when I got skeptical. <laughs> so I did what any young adult in this situation would have done. I became Batman. The first thing I decided to do was take a closer look at that beautiful profile picture up there. And then I reversed image searched it. And you'll never guess what I found. A plethora of links with that same exact picture. Teeth Stop. whitening, weight loss, portrait of beautiful Hispanic woman. That was mistake number one. This was mistake number two. Mistake number two was giving a young man technology and not expecting him to use it and abuse it. I looked up the website of the form that Dana Ramirez had sent me and I found that for the low price of $149, I could make this form myself. It's a no. template, but maybe lawyers <laughs> use templates. So I had to dig deeper. 
And that's where I found mistake number three. Mistake number three was putting an actual address in this form. With this address, I found that this is the Equitable Life Building in Los Angeles. And I mean, this is a legal document. Naturally, I look up all of their law firms in that building, and there's a lot. So you wanna know what I did? I called every applicable law firm in that building. Stop. And guess what? They've never heard of a Dana Ramirez. And they've also never heard of your case. They also gave me some legal advice. They told me that in order for this to be a legit form, the lawyer would at least need to make it known what actual law firm they hail from. And these are usually sent through the mail. But even if they're not, you still need an actual signature. It is also a crime to impersonate a lawyer. I want you no. to forever think about the day that you lost to me. I mean, I have to give you props though. <laughs> I mean, you did all of that. You put in all that effort, but just to fail? Listen, unfortunately for you, I'm not no average TikToker, and I don't take bullying or scare tactics very lightly. I'm sorry, that is like the most impressive TikTok I've ever seen. And the funny thing is, is I'm pretty sure that you can send anyone a cease and desist. You don't have to pretend to be a lawyer, you know? Don't quote me on that, but I feel like anybody can send somebody a cease and desist. But like, she was totally harassing you and like trying to talk to you and stuff and then sends you a cease and desist. Like, buddy, buddy, good for you. That's so impressive. Bro could find my dad with that kind of investigating. <laughs> Give me a last name, birthplace in 48 hours. Oh, oh my. Nothing is private anymore, guys. We're in the age of social media. Oh, you think I can't find you because you're an anonymous TikTok commenter? You think again, think again. I will find you. I will kill you. I probably couldn't, but this guy could. <laughs> I have no idea what I stumbled into, but I definitely pulled up a seat. Several seats were pulled up. I'm comfortable. I'm ready for the tea. She paid $1.49 to be embarrassed. <laughs> $1.49 well spent. This gotta be the best this you I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. This you? This you? It is. Let me just double check. Let me do my research. Can anyone send a cease and desist letter? Anyone can send a cease and desist letter. See? See? An attorney doesn't have to be involved. So just adding to this conversation, she didn't have to pretend to be an attorney, which is like illegal. She could have just sent him a cease and desist. I love it. The law is so interesting, you know? Like, I feel like when you know the law, you just are like smarter than everyone. One of my best friends got cheated on Sebi recently and I do have her permission to post this story. And they lived two hours away. So she just traveled two hours on a train to see this guy. And essentially from what I gather what happened, he was going through his phone looking for some music, swiped up his apps, and she saw something that should not be on his phone, then instantly got up and walked away like she hadn't seen it. That night, she got up in the middle of the night, went through his phone, found that she'd seen, set them as his lock screen, and then went back to sleep like nothing had happened. He wakes up in the morning, sees it, is like sweating, changes it back, <laughs> isn't sure how it happened, doesn't want to talk to her, because she's acting totally normal, she's making breakfast for him. And so begins a week of psychological warfare. She literally <laughs> pretended everything was fine with him every day, and every night reset a different as his wallpaper to see if he'd finally come forward and admit it. He is sweating, shaking. At one point he threw up while she was there because the man was having panic attacks over like going insane and not knowing if she knew or not. And my girl is a full-blown sociopath so she's comforting him, asking what's wrong, why he's so stressed. And then resetting the <laughs> every night. My guy was so confused he thought he was like sleep setting the as his lock screen in the middle of the night. A couple of times during this, he's asked her like, did you look at my phone? He changes his <laughs> passcode once, but she's too clever. And then after night five, finally breaks down and is like, what is going on? And she's like, what? Like, do you have something you wanted to tell me? So he tells her absolutely everything. And she's like, great. I just wanted to hear it from you. Packs her bags, <laughs> blocks him and everything and just never speaks to him again. After a week of actual psychological <laughs> war. <laughs> you know, I think it takes a special kind of talent to be able to like mask all of your feelings and just screw with that person. I aspire to be this petty, but I can't. I can't be upset without it being written all over my face. I can't pretend. If I'm mad at you, you're gonna know. Am I the asshole for refusing to go to my friend's boyfriend's party after she demanded to approve my outfit? Do you know what? <laughs> Don't even read it. Don't even read you're, it. You're not too. You're mad. You're you're not not this is crazy. Go ahead, man. I don't know what the heck is going okay. on. Okay. My friend Kate has a boyfriend, Jamie. 
whom she's been with for nearly three years. We met Jamie on a night out. And I would say that although he's Kate's, Kate's boyfriend, I consider him a friend. Jamie's 30th is coming up and Jamie and Kate planned a big party. And I, and I helped them out with the logistics uh, when asked. A few days ago, Kate texted me. She asked if I wouldn't mind toning down my look for the party. And if oh! I could send her a picture of what I was, what I was planning and... to wear. Oh. Even you style. And yeah. all y'all were wearing. Very direct. <laughs> we love a direct babe. I asked her what she meant by this. She asked if I could dress frumpy. Because she really didn't want to be outshone at her boyfriend's birthday The audacity! Party. When Christ. I didn't reply right away, she went on to say that she really wanted Jamie's full attention that night, which she wouldn't get if I showed up dressed properly. Hmm. I was a bit annoyed by what she was implying. So I said, if I was going to be so much of a concern for her, I'd rather just politely decline the invitation. Kate freaked out saying I was being immature by not coming just because I couldn't steal the spotlight. I said I would send uh, her Jamie's gift and she would... And she could tell him why I wasn't coming. Hmm. <laughs> I know. guess she didn't tell him the reason because Jamie messaged me saying he knows I'm booked for the night for the party. Jesus. But he'd really like it if I could be there and ask if I could reorganize so I could come. So I texted him and told him that Kate was insisting I dressed a certain way. Jamie called and explained a couple months ago, Jamie and Kate were out with a few of his friends and everyone had a lot to drink. Mm. They were talking about how they met their significant others and the story of Jamie and Kate meeting up, Kate meeting came up. Apparently, during the telling of the story, Kate asked Jamie why he decided to hit on her rather than me. Because I think when he originally met oh, Kate, they were together. They were together. Mm-hmm. One of his friends joked that it was because he knew he didn't have a shot with the hot one, me. Oh. Kate asked if this was true. If this was true, mm, and yeah, Jamie. Lie. And Jamie, having had way too much to drink, Yay. explained in a way that made it sound like it was kind of true. <laughs> Menja. We swear. He said he, didn't no- he did notice me that night and thought I was attractive just seeing me. He said he would never have approached me because he knew he would never have a chance with He's someone like me. He said that speaking to Kate no. was absolutely the best outcome because he loves her and plans on spending the rest of his life with her. Mm-hmm. But Not even knowing that. this, Kate has taken it extremely hard. And even though she says she's over it, he's noticed changes in her behavior that seem to be related to that. He also admitted oh, that he man. to propose to Kate at the party. Mm-hmm. And that is why he wanted me to be there. But after hearing this on top of the way oh, that he, she's been handling the situation previously, he won't be doing that anymore. Jesus, oh, no. like, you your own blessing, child. No, period. After speaking to Jamie, I called Kate. She admitted that she had tied a lot of her self-worth into the fact that she'd finally been picked over me. And now oh. it felt like it wasn't true. Therapy. She apologized for trying to solve her insecurities through me, but also said it, she wasn't sure she would be able to have me in her life as, eh? as much as... I had been with the way that she's she's been feeling. As hurt as I was, I said I understood. I'm really sad that I probably I've probably lost a long time friend over the drunken drunken awkwardness of other people. But I also get that Kate can't help how she feels. And frankly, it's not the best. Frankly, it's for the best not to be in a secret competition. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. So many feelings. So many feelings. Holy crap. Are we for real right now? That was a roller coaster of emotions. As someone who hangs out with some very beautiful women and is often, was often never approached. Like I was always the one that didn't end up meeting anybody that night. Like I was the one that would kind of sit there while all my friends were getting hit on. And it bothered me. It bothered me a little bit. It bothered me that like, you know, I was never the first choice. So I can understand where Kate was coming from. However, I mean, there's always going to be hotter women out there. There's always going to be, you know, more attractive women, skinnier women, women with bigger butts, women with bigger boobs. You're always going to compare yourself to other people and you can't necessarily live your life thinking that that's all guys really care about. The right one is going to care about the whole package. To call your friend and tell her that you want her to look ugly at your party, like that is just so unbelievably Delulu, so Delulu Lemon, like to even think that a friend would even show up after that. Like I understand how she feels and I understand it's it sucks to feel jealous of your friends. I'd be out of sorts if something happened like that too. Your friend can't help if she's better looking than you. You know, she just she, like, 
and you shouldn't tell her to be less beautiful or to look ugly on a particular occasion. Like, it's not like you got the guy in the end. She didn't. And I can definitely see why this engagement was called off because like that, you're just shooting yourself in your foot, shooting yourself right in your butt. My friends might have gotten the hurt from smoking a hookah in Atlanta. Oh no, are you freaking gear? Are you freaking for real? If you're in Atlanta and you're a party girl or you like to club or you like to hookah, listen to the story because this could change your life. So a couple of weeks ago, a few of my friends hit me up and wanted to go club hopping, but unfortunately I couldn't go because I had just started a new job. They went without me, they had a great time. They partied, ate, drank, hookah, yada, yada, yada. You know, the the drill. Um, a few days ago, my friend Ava gets an outbreak on her mouth and she didn't really see it as a big deal. She didn't know what it was until the next day, she sends me a picture of how worse it got. And I told her that it looked like herpes. Even I was second guessing myself as to whether it would be herpes because we don't sleep around. We're all single. We're all celibate waiting for the right person to come around, focused on school, just, you know, minding our business so me and a couple of the other girls tell her to go get checked out before her appointment to get checked out another one of my friends that was with ava that night let's just call her ava has the same outbreak on her mouth area she took a picture posted it in the group chat and another one of the girls that was there that night had like a large bump beside her lip but it didn't grow out to be an outbreak yet like i know what herpes looks like so when i saw it i like almost knew for a fact it was herpes but it was the fact that none of them had ever talked about kissing anyone new um none of us smoke um you know what i mean it was just really random for it to be herpes especially for all of them so the second girl who got the outbreak let's just call her melissa her appointment comes before ava's and um the doctor is mentioning a bunch of ways where she could have got it kissing blah 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 push comes to shove they end up figuring out that she could have possibly gotten this herpes on her lip from the hookah so when she tells us that that's what the doctor said we're like um what the fuck like that's crazy end up telling me that they only did hookah at one club that they went to i don't want to say the name because i don't want to get sued for defamation or anything like that but i Whoa. believe they were at a bar or a section in the club and they were making friends with this girl who was there with her friend and she ended up leaving um, and gave my friends her hookah so they didn't have to buy one. And even though they all had new and different hookah tips, they weren't sharing their hookah tips, it is very possible that they could have gotten herpes from sharing that hookah. And it makes sense when you think about it because a lot of saliva goes through the hookah pipe. Um, some people have braces, some people have cuts in their gums, so the blood mixes with the saliva and Whoa. the rest is history. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a scientist, I'm not any of that. But so far, that is the only conclusion that we have as to how all four of them got herpes. Dude, not just that. Like, what about, like, you're passing it around, like a vape, like a party vape? Oh, come on, you've hit the party vape, okay? I know you have. Ain't nobody touching no nozzles for me anymore. My nozzle is my nozzle. I'm never ordering hookah again. That is so messed up. <laughs> Bro, me and my FC stuck in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Bro, I'm gonna bump it over the week, <laughs> Please go get me. Hold on, hold on. Oh, are you guys okay? Blink if you need help. I think they might need help. I think I, I like how we're, we're stuck in the middle of the ocean, like crying, laughing, like really upset. Are you guys okay? Someone said help. Like I can't tell if y'all are laughing or crying or both. There's a lot going on. When our boss asks us for a drink. too good way too good i think we'll end that on a high note a tall note or a short note <laughs>